We're going to do a demo on line weight today. And you need pens that have three different line weights. It really doesn't matter what pens. Today I have Sharpie. That's your Sharpie. And instead of using the broad nib of this marker, I'm going to use the fine point. And there's a little indication where it says fine. So I'll be using that. The real idea is to have three different line thicknesses. That's what we mean by line weight. So I'm going to just make some random marks on the paper and identify what lines I'm creating. Okay, that looks thin, medium, and thick. So a good formula to use is if this is the first line weight, let's say that's the second line weight, and this is the third. The second one should be twice as thick as the first, and the third would be twice as thick as the second. As a rule of thumb, the idea is to make sure that there's definitely a difference visually that you can see. So it really doesn't matter what it says on the pen, in my opinion, as long as the mark that it makes will be consistently the same. This one will always be thin. This one should always be middle, middle tone, medium weight. And this one will be thick. I'm familiar with the Sharpie, and when you first buy it, it starts out thin, but because of the felt tip, as it gets used more, it starts to get thicker and thicker. So I'm just going to um, keep that as my thick line. Now the idea of using line weight is so that a regular line drawing won't look boring. So I'm going to sketch a little cube here. There's so many different ways to draw a cube. So I'm just going to draw it really loose here. Okay, really loose cube. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. I'm tightening up. What that means is defining the shape a little bit more clearly in case the first lines you made weren't exactly what you wanted. And just by tightening it up, it's becoming a little bit thicker. So that's not really intentional, but from there, I could, right now, I could just use a medium line weight. So this is a first line weight pen I'm using the fine one. And I got this thickness by going over it again. But having three markers, it saves time. So instead of going over it several times with a thin one, I can just use my medium marker and just outline that and correct any lines that I might have messed up. Okay, so that's a really quick way to think of line weight. Now that line is getting a little bit thicker, but now that's just two line weights, and that, that stands out pretty good. When you start doing more than one object or more than one shape, then you can start using all three line weights. So I'm going to just start with some basic geometric forms. Let me draw a square. And then I'm going to draw a triangle as if it's behind the square. And I'm going to do a circle behind both of them, part of a circle. So I'm going to pretend this circle is behind both of those things. It's a little off there. OK, let's do that one more time. And a little circle. Okay, so the idea here is first line weight. I started off with the first line weight. The second line weight will be added on top of that. So let's make the first line weight be a starting point. So that's to show all the shapes in your drawing. Now I'm going to use a second line weight. If I hold the pen at an angle, it's going to be thicker, so I'm going to hold it more vertically. So that's going to be the second line weight. One, two. And in this case, the main purpose of the second line weight is to separate different shapes. Okay, 
So I'm going to separate the shapes with a second line weight. In the end, the last one I'm going to apply is the third line weight. It's a little thicker. Call that three. So the third line weight will be to frame the entire drawing. It will be a profile line. So and call it the profile line. profile line or you can call it the silhouette, the silhouette of the shape and it brings the drawing back together again. That's optional, you don't have to always draw the third line but it makes it look a little bit more complete. It's good for graphic design and uh, we'll try it again. Uh, once you learn these rules you can break the rules but it's really important to follow these rules until you understand them and then when you break these rules do it so that you understand how you're breaking the rules. Okay. The reason why you might want to break the rules is to develop your own style of how you apply line weight. Okay, let's do the second line weight now. That's to separate shapes. So here's a square, triangle, and a circle. So the square, I'm going to outline it. The second line weight. And I like to rotate the drawing so I'm comfortable drawing that line. Okay. So let's do the triangle. Now the square is separate. What line weight also does is it separates layers. So you can think of the square being on a layer, the triangle being on a second layer, and the circle being on a third layer, the triangle in the middle layer. Okay. So let's now do the triangle. Now drawing is sort of looking flat because now everything's becoming the same line weight. That's what happens with just basic shapes, but once we do three-dimensional forms, it'll be a lot more noticeable. And then when I add the third line weight, that'll be the last. So let's do uh, the circle now, second line weight. Okay. And now it looks boring again because now they're all the same line weight. I'm going to add the third line weight. And that will be the profile line or the silhouette. So that's going to go on the very outside. Now because it's so thick, I don't want to draw into the drawing. So I'm going to apply my line weight so it just touches the line and the rest of the thickness is in the negative space. The negative space is anything that's not the actual drawing. So this will be the positive space. I'm not going to draw inside of it. I'm going to touch that line and the thickness will go into the negative space. One of the easiest things to learn about line weight is the first and third line weight. Sometimes uh, with my students I have to spend more time explaining the second line weight. The third is easy to remember because it's only the outside shape and that's easy to identify. We as humans easily figure out outlines of things so that's probably the easiest thing to do. But I don't recommend drawing the, the third line weight first. Like right here I could do the third line weight and then I have to figure out the second line weight. In my opinion, it's better to do first, second, and then third. I'm going to be uh, selective this time on how I apply the line weight. So uh, here's my middle line weight, and I'm just going to draw a line here and a line here. And so now I have a little bit of rhythm with the line. I'm going to apply my third line weight. The reason why I'm putting it down here is because I'm looking at the paper. I see this paper as up this way. Okay, now we have a thin line weight, number one, and a medium line weight. And you can think of this second one as a maybe a drop shadow. Okay, so instead of doing the entire outline, I'm selectively picking those lines out. Now with the third line weight, I'm going to do the profile line or the silhouette. And again, you don't want to draw into your drawing. You want to touch the previous line and then the rest of the thickness goes to the negative space.
And circles are always kind of tricky. I'm going to turn this upside down because the arc's this way and my wrist turns better this way. So let's give this a shot. Okay. So we're dealing with two-dimensional shapes, square, triangle, and a circle. And that's basic concepts in terms of when to use a one, a two, and a three. Now this will be more successful, I think, with a three-dimensional shape. So let's try to apply this to a three-dimensional shape, a box. Okay. Now you might notice, depending on the markers you use, there'll be a little bit of a leak. So sometimes marker will penetrate the, the paper and it'll go on to a second layer. So just be aware that you might want to put scratch paper underneath your sketch to uh, prevent leaking. Okay, or bleed as we call it. Now I'm going to draw some basic forms. Again, I'm going to start with a first line weight. So that's the starting point. And you want to make sure that you define all the basic forms that you're dealing with. And that's what we'll do now. So I, I did an underlay to make it easy. This is a really rough sketch, but now I'm going to tighten it up. And so pencil is a good starting point, and then pen is a nice finishing tool. So whenever you finish, you are trying to fix whatever your underlay was. So the underlay, the purpose of the underlay is to lay out your rough sketch. It's okay to make mistakes. And then when you're going to finish your line weight or your line drawing, then that's when you really want to work kind of clean. But you could also work loose. I could either draw these with a straight edge or freehand, and I can use what I call overshoot. Overshoot means going beyond the beginning and ending point. That way you can clearly see the, the start and finish and the, all the corners. So you, that's overshoot right there. So I'm going to do that same thing here and here. Okay. It also helps the drawing look more conceptual, a little bit more loose. As I mentioned before, I like to rotate my my drawing. And I rotate it because my arm is more comfortable moving in one direction. Okay, so there's a ver very simple line drawing. Now if I were to add line weight, there's not really much to do there. I'm going to go ahead and add line weight, but I'm going to talk about this for a second. Now if I add a second line weight, second line weight is to separate shapes. Really, there's no shapes. I'm going to call this a shape. Okay, I'm not going to do any line work here. So, I can separate shapes, and then the third line weight is a profile line. I can go straight to the profile line, because that's the only object in there. Here's a shape, so let's just do the profile line. So I made a little boo-boo. I'm just going to make that a little bit thicker. And luckily it was on the bottom of the drawing, so it'll add a little bit more weight to the bottom there. Okay, there's a basic line weight drawing. Not so boring. So a little bit of line weight. I asked a little bit of line there. And to really give it a little bit of punch, I could add a little background, which we uh, often call a vignette. And the purpose of the vignette is to add contrast to the object, the foreground and the background. So let's cover this a little bit better. I guess I can make a little pattern here. Now I'm just being creative here. I'm just going to draw an even background here. Hopefully this won't be too distracting. If I had a thicker marker, I'd be able to fill that in. So there's a little graphic pattern. It could almost be like a logo. I'm going to go ahead and fill that in with a black marker. Okay. And now this is a very high contrast illustration now. A little tight, I can loose it up by just doing something like that. 
make it a little bit more conceptual. And that's uh, basically the line weight for one object. Let's do uh, what line weight really helps, and that's to do more than one object. So I'm going to do three boxes in a row. And this time I'm going to use a straight edge. And sometimes a good technique for straight edge is to work away from the line you previously drew. So here's a line I'm going to draw. Now I'm going to move the straight edge away from that line so I don't smudge over it. Move away from there. And I already know what this is going to look like, so I can just draw all of these lines all at the same time. If I didn't know what I was going to sketch, I probably couldn't start this way. So I have my underlay here, rough, really rough drawing. Uh, depending on your, your style, you can tighten that up before you do a tracing. That's pretty loose. So I'm just doing my best to interpret that drawing. So now I'm going to finish this line here. And now draw the lines in another direction. And there's a little bit of smudging here. This is uh, my practice. So if I were going to be really careful, it would take me a lot longer for this demo. And that, I'm going to stop there. I need to draw this top edge here just to make sure these line up. And I'm doing overshoot on purpose because if I'm more careful, the demo would just be a little bit longer. And so I'm more comfortable just making this looking loose. Okay, that should be dry enough. I'm going to put my straight edge over there. If you're finding you get a lot of bleeding, um, there are some straight edges that have a little angle and that will lift the edge off the paper so uh, it doesn't cause capillary action which means when you draw a line uh, ink will sit underneath your straight edge if it's in direct contact to the paper so this edge is just a little bit off of the paper some uh, sometimes you can tape something underneath here like a penny or something to raise it up off the table off the paper lines go in the same direction. Again, I could be a little bit more careful here. I'm not too bothered by that. The overall sketch is going to be very loose. Again, uh, you should know when you're practicing and when you're doing a final sketch. This is not a final sketch. And then that's it. So there's my line weight. So that's my first line weight. We took care of one. Now we're going to do two, which is to separate the shapes. So I see three shapes here. One, two, three. I'm calling each block a shape. So let's separate those. And by separate them, I'm only going to draw the outline. Okay. So the outline is the profile of each individual one. So let's start with this one. only the outline of the shape. I'm not going inside here, just the outline. Let's do the second one. Okay, again, I'm not doing any inside lines. I'm separating three shapes. That's my focus. Separating three shapes by drawing just the outline. Let's do this one. Now you don't have to do all the lines in the same direction. I just am doing that just for today. On a different day, I might be outlining it this way, just straight ahead. Now there's two line weights, and already it's starting to look a little bit more interesting than a single line weight. And then the third is the profile line, which is the silhouette. So let's tie all these together. And again, you touch the line, and the rest of the thickness goes to the outside. And I gave up my straight edge. I draw faster without a straight edge sometimes. Sometimes a straight edge feels too restricting for me. And then 
there's your third line weight. So if you look carefully, you can see first, second, and third, and they should all look like they have a different line thickness. That's what line weight means, line thickness. Okay. And then I could do the same thing with the background. If I want to tie that whole thing together, I can do a vignette. It's not necessarily, uh, but just for fun, let's just try that. I'm going to use a straight edge this time. And now I can leave my drawing just like this, and it frames the drawing. Here's your uh, basic line weight. These are three different objects. It's not going to be uh, every time that you're going to draw three different objects. Most of the time when you're starting product design, you'll be doing only one pro uh, object. But that object might have some overlapping components. So that's what I want to show next. In this previous sketch, I had gone with a straight edge and then I start loosening it up. I'm not too bothered uh, sometimes when I have little gaps like this because again I'm thinking a rough concept. So most of my drawings have been just rough. Rough sketches and to communicate the basic concept. And then you can refine. Usually refined drawings are a little bit larger. So roughs tend to start small like a thumbnail sketch. So technically a thumbnail would be the size of your thumb. If I were to trace my thumb, let's draw a little fingernail in there. There are drawings that could actually be that size, the size of your thumbnail. So this is bigger than a thumbnail, but it's a good size for a concept sketch initially. And your, then your presentation, you want to get it as large as possible, uh, depending on what size paper you're doing. So this would be a thumbnail sketch, a little thumb. And then this would be a slightly larger, larger size. So let's do one object using the same type of configuration here. So I have an underlay, really rough underlay. So my tracing go a lot faster. Okay, let's try this. Since I already know what this drawing is going to look like, I can go ahead and just draw these straight lines. If I were to just start right away, I wouldn't draw like this. I'd probably figure out where each line is going to go. That's what's nice about doing a pencil underlay, is you can think with a pencil a lot quicker, and then use your ink as a finishing tool. Again, it doesn't matter which, way, uh, which line you draw first, just get the drawing done. And there you go. Uh, if you look at these three shapes, they're pretty similar. There's one, two, three columns. There's one, two, three columns, but what I've done is connected th these two columns at the bottom and these two at the top. Now I did that so I can uh, demonstrate second line weight and third line weight using what we've done before. So if I look at this, I can see there's a second line weight here, a second line weight here. These second line weights if you remember, are used to separate shapes. Now this is one big shape. These are three separate shapes, but I've connected it, but you can still apply the same concept. So let's do that. So this shape is overlapping this area here. They're separated. So another way to think about line weight is to separate objects. And another important thing is just to think of layers, which means one layer will be closer to you, other layers will be further away. So if I look at this shape, it's closer to me, so it'll have an outline. This shape is further away, it has an outline. This shape is even more further away, and there's your outline. And what separates the shapes or the layers is that second line weight. Here, this looks closer to me, so I'm going to separate this part, this part, is closer to me than this back area, and it will get the second line weight. Okay, I'm going to describe a line weight a little bit differently here. I'm going to go ahead and draw it in, but after I do that, I want to explain there's another way to think of second line weight. Now, I'm only going to draw those two. I know with the third line weight, it's going to be a profile line, so I don't need to draw all of that. 
because I know eventually that's going to be a third line weight. I'm using the second line weight right now. So another way to think of the second line weight is in terms of surfaces. I can see that surface, this surface, and that surface. And I can imagine this is part of another surface that's hidden underneath, behind. So whenever you know there's a hidden surface, that is an opportunity to do a second line weight. Okay, let's think about that again. I can see this surface, this surface, and this surface. Now this edge is part of another surface I can't see. It's behind here. So that's a hint that tells you that if you have an edge that's part of a hidden surface, that is a good place to put a second line weight. Okay, I could say the same thing here. There's a hidden surface uh, that connects to these edges here. I can see that surface, this surface, and then there's a back surface here, and then I could outline it here. Okay, I'm not going to outline it now because I know my third line weight will take care of that. Okay, so now I just have first and second line weight, and that's all there is. A lot of students think that should be a line weight here and here. Actually, there's one more. That surface there, that's an edge. I can see this surface, but there's another surface underneath it that goes underneath. So I want to outline that. Now I'm finished with the second line weight. Let's do the third line weight. And it's simply the silhouette. Or you can call it the profile line. And when I finish this, I'll talk about the lines that you can leave out if you want to start developing your own style. Okay, so the purpose of this part of the demo is just so you know exactly where to put the first, second, and third. And then later on, you can decide how much of the third line you want to draw. Okay, so this line uh, drawing is now completed. It has the first line weight, second line weight, this one too. And then the third line weight. Okay. On the second line weight, I had now described it's an edge that connects to a hidden surface. Okay. And that's it.